It feels good to be home. I will try to make sure that I'm checking these. Well, shoot, you can check Facebook too since we're not going on IG. <clears throat> Just in case I miss anything. But I anyway, see it on Facebook. We are live. And I just shared it already. Did you tag me or do I have to go share it? Um, hold on. Uh, I'm so hungry. Oh my gosh, it's two o'clock. Hey, everybody. Hey, y'all know we just kind of rambling, trying to get our minds together and life together. I hope y'all are doing great on this Thursday. I'm editing your post. Let me see if it'll let us tag each other. My post or your post you just did? No, this one. Oh. I don't think it's gonna let us do that, but I'll just share it to your page. Okay. Then I'll go accept it. Okay, you guys, thank you so much uh, for tuning in today. I'm trying to see, I wish you would tell us how many people were live or like leaving comments. Yeah, it's not going to tell you on the Zoom screen. That's why you got to keep going back for, or you could just keep it open on your phone and look I'm at it that. I'm going to keep it open on my phone so I can see your questions. And I wanted to go to that, that page and pull up them those questions. Oh, I have it in text message. Oh, okay. Um, I'm about to mute me myself because I'm about to ask the boys to bring me something to eat. Okay. Y'all give us like one more second, okay? I'm trying to tag, trying to share and all that stuff to the video. I got that Kanye West song stuck in my head. Fly high, uh, uh, fly high. Dun, 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 dun. I got Destiny's oh. Child stuck in my head. I'm up okay. here. You be saying no, 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 no. When it's really yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> I've been on my 90s vibe. I've been listening yeah. to like hip hop music from the, the 2000s. I've been I've been on that type of stuff lately. It has a little some of it has a little cussing in it, but it's not like this music today, y'all, where it's just like every word, even though I feel like today's music, I don't know which I'll be talking about. I can't understand the words that are coming out of your mouth. And it's like bleh, 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 ah, mm, ah. except for when you cuss. We we hear that clearly. Yes. Yes. Um, and so I have a challenge like listening because I like hip hop music. I like good hip hop music and just um, I, is hip hop dead? No. Is it dead? Listen, do we need to pull up the Brown Sugar movie? OK, no, but that but that was then we in 2021. So well, I don't really know what they now. consider hip hop now, because what they do now, I don't consider hip hop. So it but so there I, are still some people who do hip hop. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Chance, Chance the Rapper. I Chance like him. The rapper does hip hop? He does kind of a little bit, you know. I like his his stuff. Is this the library chat? Okay. It's not really, but I'll go, I'll start with that. Thank you. Right. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. So, I just want to put this out here just in case y'all saw the post about my song <clears throat> that I wrote about this green smoothie thing on day four, but I haven't had a smoothie in like a whole day because I got hungry, but I ate uh, an Impossible Whopper, so I did still haven't eaten any meat. 
but I, I'm also over smoothies. And since Jazz quit on me, I felt like I don't really need to drink any more smoothies. So I'm just gonna just not eat meat and finish out this week strong as possible. But I've lost four pounds, so I'm not mad. I don't know how much I lost y'all. I have not got on the scale because I'm like, you know what? I don't know what happened with this month. This whole month, I'm like, I'm losing 10 pounds this month. I'm fired up at the beginning of the month. And then just like Nathan, Nathan happened. That's why I'm, I'm calling him Nathan. Nothing happened. Like I just, I just didn't have like no gas. I kept like thinking about it and like wanting to do it. And then I had like some life stuff that happened in between me saying, I'm losing 10 pounds. And then I look and it's almost the end of the month. And I, I still have those 10 pounds and probably a few extra to go now. So, but praise God. All right. So I think today is just, I really just wanted to talk. So it's going to be a lot of kind of random things. Um, some stuff that we've been looking at on Facebook that we wanted to discuss and the first one is provided by young um young gentleman he says that most women can't handle the truth because deep inside they still believe in fairy tales a rich handsome prince does not want a fat masculine woman with three baby daddies anyway <laughs> I should not laugh at his post, but like some of the stuff he says, I found I find a little comical, even though it's really rude. It's very rude. Why she got to look masculine? I don't know, but Jazz be getting mad. I just be like, wow, the things that people say. I just I don't know, but it is in a way I may slightly agree with him a little bit not the masculine fat three baby daddy type thing but I do feel like sometimes women and some men but uh cannot accept the truth because they're still living in this type fairy tale world or this this world where somebody is going to come and rescue them um so I I think that you have to get to a place where you stop looking for someone to rescue you and move on and, and well, allow Jesus to rescue you, but then also learn how to rescue yourself and stop playing the victim. It's because whoever it is that you are ultimately supposed to be with, or you're trying to draw and attract, you're only going to draw and attract somebody who is compatible to you. So if you have nothing to offer or bring to the table, then you're not going to draw this rich fairy tale type man or you're not going to draw this man who's going to treat you well because you're used to being in toxic relationships and you haven't allowed yourself to heal from that so you have to heal first so that you can be able to do that and um something that my brother said when we were having a conversation before um why would a man who is wealthy want you when you have no type of hustle or ambition or anything like you are pretty much okay with just sitting on your butt all day on social media and watching tv and you know doing whatever you're not trying you add no value actually to his life and men real men are beyond that whole just open up your legs and give me something like what are what Sex is good. Sex was created by God. So it was intended to be something good. But if that's all you have to give to somebody, yeah, you're not going to get somebody who's rich and doing well off because they want more than just your body. They actually want your mind. One of the big things for me is I, I was telling Jazz this, when guys tell me um, that I'm pretty, that I'm beautiful, I appreciate that. Cause I, I, but I already know though. Did you see like that her eye go up? Like right. That? Because, cause I already know these things. So I'm not saying that I'm not, I don't have lack self-confidence. I know that I've, I've been beautiful my whole life. So I've been told this my whole life, but I got to a place in myself where giving me a whole bunch of compliments on my looks 
really doesn't do anything for me because I need to be mentally stimulated. And if you can't mentally stimulate me, it, we don't really have things to talk about. Like, what are your goals? What are you trying to do for your future? If all you want to do is lay up under me, we gonna have an issue because I'm a very busy woman and I don't have time for that. Back to my grades. But that's my thoughts on that post. How do you feel about it, Jasmine? Well, let me let me repeat it. Most women can't handle the truth because deep inside they are still they still believe in fairy tales. A rich, handsome prince does not want a fat, masculine woman with three baby daddies anyway. So, uh, for those who those of you guys who don't really know me yet and my personality, God has just really handcrafted me just just so unique and special. I just absolutely love it. This reminds me though of like 17th century when the young princes were looking for princesses that were going to be queens. They would go and like bring them the picture because they didn't have Facebook and Instagram and, and all that stuff in the 17th century. So they had a painter had to paint a portrait, bring it to the prince to see if he liked it. And there were a few movies and documentaries that I watched where you know, the princes, they, they didn't want the hef the hefty one. They wanted a skinny chick with some wide hips because they knew that she was going to bear the children. You know, that she had a birth canal that was going to be conducive to produce them an heir. So me, the, I'm looking at it from this particular perspective. So you may be right. A rich, handsome prince doesn't want a fat, masculine woman with three baby daddies. Back in the days, you couldn't have no babies because yo, whoever you was with, the only is supposed to be the only person that you with. But we're in 2021, so what I want to say about this is that um, there are rich and very handsome men that will want a curvy um, <clears throat> a woman that maybe happens to have three different baby daddies. So I think again, it's all about you know, the perspective. No, we shouldn't sit around here. You shouldn't sit around here and fantasize about some stuff that you're not willing to level yourself up to have. Because in order for you to even receive a prince, you have to be in a position for that. So if that's what you're wanting, if that's what you're desiring, a different caliber of men, position yourself so that you can receive a different caliber of men. You know, maybe change where you go, the places that you hang out, maybe get yourself a different circle, maybe pray, maybe trust God, you know, maybe do the things that he's placed on the inside of you so that the, the destiny in that moment can collide where you really meet, where your destiny meets your purpose and where you meet the guy that God has for you. You know, and I think I always forget if I was talking to a song or if I was talking to Adrian, but I think I was talking to you. We we're talking about people who won the lotto. Oh, and yeah. Being bankrupt, you know, after a certain time, there's some statistics online. I don't have the statistics for you here, but I'm sure you can Google it about the amount of bankruptcies. And that's just because they were not positioned to receive that type of money. And so they just ran through it, bought whatever they want. They didn't have to go through the process of, of earning it, earning the money, working for it or whatever, that it was just given to them. So imagine you being in your situation right now with your mindset right now, with your income level or your, your lack or whatever you got going on right now, do you really think that God is going to send somebody like that in your life? So that's what I see. So I do agree with that. But again, mm -hmm. that goes back to us just really needing to change our mindset and position ourselves, allow God to help to position ourselves so we can get to where we need to be. Yes. That's my and I think sometimes a lot of stuff that he says is very real, but it comes off very controversial the way that he says it. Like he had to add that last part about, you know, being masculine, fat and stuff, because again, people have different things that they like. Some people like women who are bigger. Some people like women who are smaller, whatever your preference is, that's yeah. your preference. Um, that don't really have nothing to do with it. Some people, we, you guys, we had a conversation about one of the things he said about you being unwifeable. If you got three baby daddies, um, 
you know, because don't nobody want that. That's that's the, that person's preference. Um, some people are very okay with marrying somebody who has had multiple baby daddies. Um, it's all about your mindset and the way that you change those things. And because um, we had another one of our um, viewers it was actually on our Instagram and he said he doesn't mind being with somebody who has children already from previous relationships, multiple relationships, as long as she carries herself in a, in a manner befitting of a queen and, and yeah. you know, she, she shows him respect and stuff. And when it comes down to it, especially all the guys that I've been doing interviews with for, for my, um, my series, respect is the most important thing men want to be respected and they're not they they're not really looking at those other things some may but most aren't if you show them respect and you you treat them well there's nothing they wouldn't do for you but you gotta you gotta change your mindset yeah like amen amen to that now this next one though on to the next one mm-hmm Women 35 plus are for 50 year old men. See, now I felt some way about this when I read that one. I was like, what you trying to say? Because I am 36, about to be 37. I don't know if I really want a, a dude that's 50 or anywhere around that. But then I have to keep reminding myself, I'm really not that far from 50, but that is still far, y'all. I don't want somebody 15 years older than me. But when we were talking about that, because um, my dad, he would always say this to me. Um, and he said it a lot, even after relationships would end. He was like, I've always told you, you need to be with an older man because they're more mature and they would understand you and you have a more of a mature mindset. And I'm like, dad, I don't want to date somebody your age. I don't want to be with somebody your age. Um, and I still don't. But as I got older and I started to understand, it's not about the age specifically. It's about the mental maturity and the emotional intelligence of a person. And um, that is key. And sometimes, probably in most cases, it takes men a little longer for them to get to that emotional intelligence stage than it does a female, especially if it's a female who's been raising kids alone, so she had to grow up a whole lot faster. So my emotional intelligence stage may be up there in my 40s or 50s already, whereas a man at the same age as I am, 36, he may be a little younger in his emotional intelligence and his maturity. He may be at age 30, so we wouldn't be compatible. And of course, men don't want women treating them like their mom, like they're, you know, their mom and that the, the man is a child and stuff. So you want to have somebody who's more emotionally mature um, and that can be able to be a leader because women are not going to submit to a man that does not know how to lead. And we're not talking about leading by controlling and being abusive and things like that. There is a way to be able to be a leader in, in a loving manner. And only a mature man knows how to do that. And one who is emotionally whole and has that emotional intelligence. So sometimes that means you have to be open to somebody who is older than you. But again, I'm still not saying that you got to be with somebody 15 years older than you because listen, I don't know. So you got to let the Lord lead you on that one. That's my feelings on it. I'm still not really that open to, I've had guys who were that old and try to talk to me. And I just be like, 45 is like my cutoff. Since I'm 36, 45 is my cutoff. I'm good with like nine or 10 years. Not my 15 years. Mm -mm. You could have had a whole baby. You could have had a whole me by like <laughs> you was in high school and I was just being born. I feel some kind of way about that. Listen, so my husband is, he's 10 years older than me. And the biggest difference that I see between him and someone that is my age is the maturity. So when I see a post like that, I think women over 35 are not going to play these games with you. Like, we're not going to play these games. We know what we want. And, um, and we're, and we're going to speak, we're going to confess and we're going to get what we want. And I am not looking for, um, somebody who isn't stable, you know? And so hopefully if you're in your fifties, 
you have secured your bag or is tried to secure your bag or whatever it is that you want to call it. But when I hear that, I just think it's just, just wanting somebody who's mature. So you're right. Women over 35, they do want a mature man. And it doesn't have, it doesn't mean that the man has to be 50, but I couldn't imagine myself being with a 30 year old man, even if he was kind of mature, because I don't know why I feel like he would just be playing video games and just shit. And I'm just, I don't want to come home and see you playing video games now. Hey, if that's what you do, that's what your husband do. That's fine. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about me. So when I come home, my husband is listening to praise and worship. My husband, he might be watching something funny on YouTube or something like that. Maybe possibly or a sermon or something. I'm cool with that. But if I came home and he was playing like Madden or 2K, I don't even know it. The t- NBA 2K. Fortnite. Fortnite and stuff Call like that. Call of Duty. That just doesn't work for me. I'm trying so. to think of the stuff my kids be playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like I think he'll play it like if it was here but anyway we just don't have on that but and I don't uh, so for me I don't necessarily have like a huge issue with you know the whole playing of video games if that's your your thing that you do mm-hmm. to relieve stress I'm just saying like make sure your your business and stuff is handled first like make sure you're at to it right make sure you I like addictions with the video games and I'd be like no I don't want that Mm -hmm. yeah so like I I don't want to walk in and you you know just like the house is a mess and you waiting on me to cook and clean and you sitting there playing video games because then I'm gonna start yelling like my kids like why y'all ain't did the dishes why why is this going like I done worked all day and that's what I come home to. Yeah, no, I got a problem with that. Now, hey, look, you just that's what's the most amazing thing about life is that we get to like live it and and set again, there we go with that maturity, set up those realistic or those expectations of things that you want you know play your video games but make sure your home is taken care of and so that's what that is 35 years old yeah we I don't have no time to play no games with you I know what I want and I want to continue to live my life and to you know just have a good time shoot 35 even though that is not old by the way I just it's want- not it's really I, I thought it was old when I was younger and then I got I you know, I got here and I was like oh <laughs> I'm still oh, yeah. pretty young. Yes, very young. Okay, so the next one was, um, um, are you a single mom by, hold on. Are you, hold on, let me go back to it. I thought I remembered it. The one about the single mom, are you a single mom by choice? Like, do you choose to be a single mom? Yeah, I'm scrolling. So this one says, are black women taught how to live without a man rather than keep one? That one. Um, so I feel like that is a very interesting question and I do feel like situations and circumstances have taught us how to live without uh, having a man around Um, I do remember one of the comments in there talked about how slavery you know stripping the um, male away from the family or you know making him less masculine by um, raping him and, you know, beating him in front of his families and stuff made it to where, you know, women had to become stronger. Um, And then also with, you know, a lot of our men going to prison and things like that. And so women learning to have to raise their kids on their own. um, We have maybe subconsciously learn how to do things by ourselves and not needed a man to do those things is not to say that we didn't want one but when you watch your 
you know, mother raise her kids alone and then you go through the same thing, raising your kids alone and then like, or then you have experiences where the man just doesn't do what he's supposed to do um, or he doesn't step up to be a father, or be, you know, a husband, then it just becomes really easy to just be like, you know what, I got this on my own and I don't need your help for that. Um, and I feel like it's, it's not... It's not so much that we want to do it. It's just something that we've been taught because you do have some women who focus on trying to keep the man no matter what they're doing, no matter how they're being treated and stuff. And that is extremely unhealthy because then you turn into being very codependent where you're trying to keep this man just so you can say you have a man. Mm. And it's not worth it because that's the burden on you. I need water. Go go get you some water, girl. We we're gonna put her on pause real quick. I can't fin finish her sentence, but uh but she choking over there. No one can hear me yelling. Oh, okay. I was just making sure you wasn't choking. So are Black women taught how to live without a man rather than how to keep one? Again, this is all based on your background, is based on how you were raised, if you had a two-parent household, if you had a one-parent household, and what you, what you witness if you grew up witnessing a lot of single moms um, in your family, you know, how are you going to be taught how to keep a man if the women in your family don't have them? If you don't have those examples of um, being submissive to your husband, I like saying that word because people hate it and I love it. I love being submissive to my husband. Um, how to, how to, you know, how to serve him, how to do this for him. And it's all about me, me, me. Like, that's just that flesh thing where you just want everything for yourself, but you have to learn those things. And so when you don't grow up with it, what do you do? You get you some books, you find you some mentors, you, you do something. And then you're on this journey. You're on this lifelong journey. You're on this process and you're, you're pretty much building your legacy because there are things that that as you learn you'll be able to pass your daughter and you'll be able to show your daughter how to yeah how to take care of herself but when she is in that position and she wants to give out this love like how to do it so again i believe it is just how you were raised if you had a two-parent household if your two-parent household was functional or if it wasn't dysfunctional or if you you know just had a single mom or maybe you grew up with your dad or something like that and you didn't get to see that so you just kind of you kind of become who you are, but luckily with Christ, you get to have your mind renewed and you get to become new in him and you get to learn all this stuff all over again. So that's why that part can get a little overwhelming because you're like, man, I'm 35. I don't know how to be no wife. I don't know how to you know, submit to no husband. I don't know how to do that. Well, guess what? I didn't know how to do it either, but I had to learn it. It had mm -hmm. to be a desire of my heart to want to learn how to do that. And and I, I guess one thing I had to realize too is that I could not be taking, you know, marriage advice from somebody who was single. Now, let me clarify this because my best friend is single and I love her to death and I do talk to her about everything and she gives me advice. But if you're wanting, if you're a married woman and you're looking to get married or advice on how to be married, on how to stay married, look at people who've been married for a long time. Ask right. them, always asking people questions. You've been married 10, 15, 20 years. What did you do? You know, right. how did you stay married? Because today I love my husband. Tomorrow I might not want to see his face. You know what I mean? And we all go through these things. So it, you just got to learn. It's just, it's about learning. But again, the good thing is it doesn't matter how you were raised or how you were brought up. You can have your mind renewed and you can, you know, have those desires if you want to learn how to love your husband. It's not too late or love a man, period. But that starts with loving yourself first because if you can't love yourself, you can't love nobody else. Facts. Um, and also I will add in there, <clears throat> um, 
again, not that women want to live without or learn or be comfortable living without, but sometimes depending on your status as a female, like um, if you, because he did have another thing, he was like, I don't care about, you know, your degree and da, 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 whatever. Um, he want to know if you afraid. Pretty much yeah. like if, uh, if a black woman, cause he specifically was talking about black women. If a black woman is educated, she has a degree. Um, she has a good career. Um, you know, she makes a lot of money, all of these different things. Sometimes the, it's difficult for her to actually find somebody who is not going to try to suppress her from being all of those things because they get intimidated and that comes from a person who's insecure so then at that point it's easier to just be single because you don't want to have to not be yourself and and then suppress all of the accomplishments that you've made in your life the personal accomplishments that you've made for somebody who is um not generally going genuinely going to support you in that so you know and then that's also why Sometimes Black women end up dating outside of their race because they get appreciated more for the amazing things that they have done by other people that are not this color. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not saying, like, I love Black men. And that's really all I've... <laughs> That's really all I've ever been with, but um, I have gotten a lot of appreciation and acknowledgments and, you know, things from people, from men specifically, who are not Black, and they just, you know, just think the world of me, and then sometimes Black men are like, oh, you just, whatever, and I'm like, okay, so... You know, but again, that goes back to the first thing we were talking about, about that having that emotional intelligence and maturity and getting some counseling, working on yourself, having healing. And if you are walking in your own purpose, then you won't feel, you know, any kind of way about the woman being successful because you will have worked and you're successful in your own right. And even if you don't make as much money as her, you won't feel jealous about that <clears throat> because you will be, there's a word that I'm looking for. You'll be sure in who you are yeah. and who God called you to be. And so you won't be in competition with her because you will understand you guys are a team. Um, and so when that happens, then women are open to keeping a man around. Yeah. Uh, amen to that. So Miss Susie in the chat says, oh, hello, Miss Susie. Hey, Susie. Um, so she had put uh, a few comments. The first one was, right, if you want to lounge and play video games, participate in life and <clears throat> participate in life and family first. Right now I'm playing a video game, but my house is clean, my bills are paid, and my kids are fed. I am not mad at that. And then she said... <laughs> In today's world, I think all women need to be taught how to be single and how to keep a man. So good, yes, equipping them with both of those skills. A woman should never be dependent on a man because we never know when he won't be there. Facts, and it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, he's just gonna leave, but also, I mean, he could die. Things happen, and, and that was, so my grandparents, um, my grandmother married my grandfather when she was 17 and she was with him until he died. When he died, it devastated her because she had never been by herself. So she didn't know how to be by herself. And there was a lot of things that even though she had had a job, raised a family and stuff, she, there were things that she had to learn how to do because she had she always had him there to do it. Man. So I, I tell people, I just had this conversation with somebody the other day, um, because, okay, hear me on this. I do not give marriage advice to people, but I do give relationship or toxic relationship advice or how to recognize it's a toxic relationship and help you to have boundaries yes. and things like that. Because people think I do relationship advice. 
or like marriage, like people come to me and they're married and I'm like, I don't give marriage advice because I'm not married. Like Jazz is saying, like, if you want to have a healthy marriage, don't come to me. But I can tell you if you how to recognize a toxic relationship. Um, and that is still very benefit, beneficial. Pastor Dion says, I can tell you what not to do. And mm-hmm. I can tell you, you know, what you should do in order to stay married, but I can't tell you how to be married. I can just tell you what, what you shouldn't do. Facts. Do that type of advice. So get you some of them friends too. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, so they had mentioned to me, they was like, well, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. If you can help me find somebody like you, then I'd get a divorce. And I was like, first of all, I'm not telling you to get out this relationship so you can get into another relationship. That's not what you need to do. What you need to do is if you do want to leave this relationship, you need to go ahead and leave whether or not you got somebody else lined up, but you need to have that time for yourself to learn yourself. Because if you don't know what you like, what you dislike, what your triggers are, if you're not emotionally healthy, you're just going to keep attracting people who yeah. are going to be unemotionally healthy as well. And then yeah. both of you guys are going to be trauma bonding. And that is very Ooh. unhealthy to have in a relationship. So learn to be by yourself. My grandmother gave us some great advice. Um, she said, when you get out of rela- a relationship, you should be single for at least two years so that you can work on yourself. Mm. And that gives you time to heal properly because if you go from relationship to relationship to relationship, you're just getting more and more baggage and it's harder or it's going to take longer for you to heal from that because now you have all of these things. And because you don't know what your triggers are, Mm. um, the next person you're with, they're going to do something. It's going to trigger you. You're going to lash out and then you'll be all crazy. Then you're going to be like, it was their fault, but you didn't actually recognize that this was an issue from, for you from previous relationships because you never actually dealt with this stuff. So be single and learn you. Learn to love you. And then you'll know how to yes. allow somebody else to love you. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, you know, teaching um, young women, black, white, purple, orange, whatever, women to love themselves, you know, when they're going through that single season and then teaching them how to, you know, go to that next level. And I think that's why um, mothers are so important. Your mothers are so important. Grandparents are, you know, the, the, what does the Bible say that the older women, the seasoned women, the older women are supposed to teach the younger women because you guys have those that life experience that the younger women need um irregardless if you did grow up in a a two-parent household or or not it's the wisdom that you get from older women man I wish I would appreciate I wish I would have really took more time to you know sit at my grandmother's feet or my great-grandmother's feet and really just listen to the wisdom that they had Um, but then that takes a a mature mindset and that wasn't something that I had at the time but you know if I did the all the stories and and life experiences that I could have you know had in my repertoire so um, seasoned women this is for you if you were listening talk get you some younger women that you can speak life into teach them whatever you have you know it could be really anything. There's something that God has placed on the inside of you to be able to teach these women, to show these women and to encourage these women. So if the Lord has placed a woman on your heart, women on your heart or whatever, you know, don't be afraid to share. And I love it. Again, I love it when older women share with me because I'm like, wow, there's so much wisdom, even in their prayers, there's Mm -hmm. so much wisdom (laughs) and revelation of it. I'm like, I want to know more about that. So Mm -hmm. Shout out to the seasoned women. Yes. Ladies are a blessing and full of wisdom. And I will add to that. Like, have you ever seen the movie War Room when she was just talking with that woman? And that was amazing. Um, and one of the things that I valued so much about being able to have uh, the grandmother that I did and like she, she saw all of our flaws, all the things that we did wrong, but she just loved us with the love of Christ. She never like threw it in our face. Like, oh, you always messing up. Like, oh, you always doing this. You always doing that. She just loved us where we was at. And like, we would come to her. And so it made it easy for us to be able to open up and be like, man, I did this wrong. or I messed up this way. I messed up that way. Like, and you know, what do I do now? And she's like, oh, baby, well, 
this is what I would do in that situation. She never like made us feel ashamed of the mistakes that we made because you know, when you mess up, you don't need nobody else to make you feel bad about it because you already feel bad yourself. So what you need, and it's the same thing that Jesus did when the woman was caught in adultery and the, you know, the Pharisees, Sadducees, all the, you know, people who didn't think they were sinners threw her at the feet of Jesus. It was like, she needed to be stoned. He didn't even, you know, attack her for what she did. He told them whoever was out saying cast a first stone yeah. and they all walked off. And then, you know, he looked up, he was like, where are the people at? Okay, fine. Well, you've been forgiven, go and sin no more. And that was the end of it. He didn't be like, now, you know, you trifling this, this, that, and everything like that. Cause she already knew that how she messed up. And the thing that draws people, and I think we talked about this in the last video, that's going to draw people to Christ is the love of God. That's what draws people. It's not you ridiculing them and, and telling them everything that they do wrong. Allow God to work on them in those areas. But the more you show them love, the more they're willing to open up and be, be vulnerable with you and then heed your advice. Because people don't want advice from people who make them feel bad all the time. Exactly. Mm. People don't, say that again, people don't want advice from people who make them feel bad all the time exactly they tend to stay away from those people so if you got people around you that you'd be like why this person don't ever talk to me they don't reach out to me you probably one of those people you make them feel bad so they stay away in the church anyways what was the next thing i don't have my tea right now so I'm just that's why i keep drinking my water <laughs> I'm just scratching my head because I don't have my tea right now. And I'm like, ooh, I would have loved to sip on some tea and just mind my own business on that one. But this that's water great. is delicious. Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know. That kind of made me feel some type of way too. You know, that conversation I just had with Jaden. She's like, mom, you're always telling me this. My daughter's so cute. I'm like, girl, you don't need no eyelashes and, you know, fake looking nose rings. Like, you don't need all that. She's like, mom, you always just, why can't you just say, you know, something else and I'm like well what do you want me to say like you want me to let you go out there like that your eyelashes is looking like this and then you got fake nose rings I'm like you don't even need all that you're you just and you always tell me that you know and I, I think that um you know when it even comes to her I'm trying to work on being mindful of that because I don't want to just nag I don't want to go to her where I'm just always nagging or I'm always complaining or doing something like that because I don't want her to shut off on me Mm -hmm. I don't want her not to feel like I like I, or to feel like I'm just going to judge her for everything. But y'all, y'all gonna have to help me because I'm a little bad looking eyelashes and a little fake little nose ring stuff. Y'all give me some verbiage. Tell me how I can express my feelings to my daughter about how absolutely gorgeous she is and how she don't need all this other, you know, stuff to be pretty and to feel pretty. So if y'all have some good suggestions for me, leave it in the comments because I don't want to be nagging her and stuff, but she just already cute. You just already cute, girl. You ain't got to do all of that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very difficult um, at times parenting. And we had this conversation, we we're talking about it last night, especially with your kids and social media um, and the things that they may be posting. And a lot of times they're doing it because they're trying to fit in with the culture with, you know, everybody else around them. Like I had talked to my son yesterday about some stuff that he was posting. He was like, well, everybody is posting stuff like that. Okay, but that doesn't mean that you need to. Yeah, okay. And I get, you know, it's really hard trying to be somebody who stands out from the crowd because you don't want people to not like you. So um, so you do things that you may not, it may not really fit with who you are, but you're trying to, at that age, I think they're trying to find themselves. They're trying to figure out their identity. And so they're trying on different identities from other people and seeing, you know, does this, does this make me liked? Do people like me like this? Okay, well, I'll be that person. And so I try to like really focus on reminding my kids constantly who they are. Like, this is who you are. This is the type of person you are. Remember you, you do these things. Don't follow the world because 
trends change, people change. One day they might like you and think the world of you. The next day they ain't gonna like you. Um, and I was having a conversation with somebody else and I was telling them, I said, you could do everything right. Somebody's still not gonna like you. Somebody's still gonna complain. So just be you and enjoy being yourself and the right people will come around you and be your tribe. You don't have to go and look for people to like you and you don't have to fit into the mold of somebody else yeah. to get people to like you because that's not who God created you to be. The right people will be drawn to you. So um, that's what I try to tell my kids too. But it is difficult because sometimes I'll be seeing stuff and I'll be like, like that's what you, that's what we're doing today. Mm. But I have very, very unique facial expressions. And so they, they, you know, and they be like, and then sometimes they're super, super sensitive about stuff too. They're like, well, why you say that? Why you hurt my feelings? And I'm like, everything I say, I told one day, one of them was ashy. And I was like, you need to put some lotion on because you're ashy. They was like, that's so offensive. I was like, how is that offensive? It's a fact. Like, I see ash. If you put lotion on, it will fix that issue. What are we talking? Why, why are we offended about this? I don't know, but you know. See, I think it's how we say it, Song. How how else do you I say? Think, I don't know how does I don't know how to say it. You know, maybe instead of telling like, because I'm still trying to think about Jaden here. Instead of just like, we should take those off. Like, how about just some regular mascara or something like that? I don't know. But how about just grabbing some lotion and giving it to him and say, here, this is for your knees. He's still ashy. You still helping him out, and you just pass him over the lotion. I think that's a good suggestion. Just passing the lotion up so then you're not saying, why are you ashy? Exactly. Oh, you know what you can do? You could always like take her to like um, Ulta or like one of those places who like they do your makeup and stuff and um, let them do her makeup. And then she can see what she would look like with just regular stuff and how pretty it is. And then maybe she'll see that the other stuff just don't work for her. I'm going to try that. I, I will definitely, I will try that. And I'm not going to be like, baby, I'm just, she said, just look at her. So I'm just going to go. <laughs> and I'm y'all, if y'all parent was looking at y'all like that, what would y'all be thinking? If you if you came out the room and your mom was looking at you like, <laughs> and you'd be like what are you looking at and then I'm gonna have to tell her because right. she asked mom why are you looking like that and I'm be like you told me just look at you like this when I'm when you out looking crazy so I'm just gonna go <laughs> oh god and she's so cute anyway whatever so oh <sighs> Those were the three things that I had wanted to talk about. Just, you guys, watch what you're watching on social media. Test the spirit. We obviously know that um, this particular gentleman um, has had some life things that have hit him to make him, you know, message or to post those type of things. And, you know, God bless you, brother. I thank you. I actually thank you for it because you give us something to talk about. Some of the stuff would make us chuckle a little bit, but some of the stuff I'd just be like, what are you thinking about? So anyway, um, yeah, that, that was great. I'm not going to, we're not going to disclose who you are, but thank you so much for letting the Lord use you. Mm -hmm. I think he had one talking about, you know, being a single mom by choice. What? Yeah, that was the one you were talking about. Um, was it oh. a choice, choice or not? <clears throat> And I agree. I, I said yes and no, because um, is for me personally, it was not my intention on becoming a single mother, but I also was not going to stay in a place that was unhealthy for me or my children. So thus, I made the decision to be a single mother. And I feel like it's very simple. And I know one of the things he said, he was like, you could always choose to stay. I could, but I'm also not going to, I'm big on you know, not giving my kids a reason to have to need counseling as adults to heal from their childhood trauma. So yeah. I, you know, weigh the options of things. And in every aspect, I've always weighed the option of 
is it better to stay in a relationship? And then my kids have to heal from the stuff that's happening inside the relationship that they see. Because I grew up, I was a child who grew up seeing my mom be in abusive relationships. And I know the psychological damage that it did to me because it allowed me to think that it was okay for me to be in abusive relationships too. So until I had my first child and my first child was one and he he may not remember it because he was one, but um, his dad hit me in front of him. And that's when it just like clicked in my head. I can't have my child go through seeing this because it was traumatizing for me as a kid to see my mom be beat on. Um, even though she fought back, my mom was a fighter, but it, it's still not the same because okay, you're still getting yourself beat down. So I think about these things when, you know, when do I stay in a relationship or not? It does not matter if you love a person, you can love a person and still leave a person yeah. um, if it's an unhealthy situation, but you have to think about loving yourself enough to be able to walk away and loving your children enough to be able to walk away because what are you setting them up for or what are you showing them by staying in this relationship and a lot of times people say well I was showing them that you be committed and you be loyal and you stay with somebody through thick and thin that's not really what you're teaching them though you're teaching them that abuse is okay and I'm not just talking about physical abuse any kind of aspect of abuse yeah. that is happening if your children are being abused by a person and you're staying with this person you're teaching your kids that they, their worth is lower than, you know, you being financially okay. So you stay with this person because we know there have been, you know, even movies who have shown that, you know, mom staying with the husband because he takes care of everything financially. So he, she turns her, you know, turns her a blind eye to him molesting their daughter. So that teaches the girl, oh, this is okay, because what happens in this household stays in this household, and um, I knew of a speaker, I don't remember her name right now, but she said her, her father was a minister in a church, and molested her all the way through her teens or something, it just got to the place where it was normalized to her that she would have sex with her dad, and her family knew about it, and nobody did anything about it, and so what are you teaching your kids, or what are you telling them about their own value and self-worth when you stay in unhealthy relationships. So if you can't leave for you, do it for your kids, be strong enough to do it for them. Because if not, you are part of continuing this generational curse in the cycle um, that people in the church always go around talking about breaking these generational curses, but um, you're talking about these spirits, but there are physical things that you could be doing to help break that off but you don't have the courage enough to just walk away. Now, I'm not trying to get in nobody's business. You do what you want to do. I just, for, personally for me, I don't want to continue something and then my, my kids be the ones that have to be strong enough to break this generational curse for the next generation. Why not have it stop with me? Yeah, and so when you ask a question, like this is, this is why I love his questions because I'm like, it really causes you it causes us to be able to have these conversations because I think his point was like you chose him so if you choose to leave like you should have stayed with him because you chose him that's kind of when I what I got out of that mm -hmm. I think that that's how a lot of abusers um talk as well um they'll they'll say things like oh you said or you wanted to do this and we were supposed to be doing this together and why are you trying to leave and why they'll try to find something to to keep you but it takes a strong woman it takes a strong woman to be a single woman. So shout out to all the single moms out there taking care of their children by themselves and, you know, making sure their kids have the abundance of life. Uh, Mr. Wisdom King is going to private school. Hallelujah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And God is so good. So it doesn't matter even if you are and if you're married or if you're a single or if you're a single woman, you can still have every single thing that you need in this lifetime. So I just hate it how people always try to throw shade at you if you're a single mom. Like, okay, so if if a person is a single mom, there must be a single dad out there somewhere. Right. Like, somewhere. <laughs> you just gonna talk about the mamas because you the one that ended up with the kids, you the one that decided not to stay. You know, there's so many, there's just, oh my God, there's just so much, but um, I'm, I am so proud of you though, because I know that that decision for you, that 
not that it was hard, but it's just, it's a lot because you're, you're like, I just came from being single and now I'm married to this person and we got a whole kid and we just, all this stuff is going on. And I think that um, it it's, I'm trying to watch my words because I, I don't want to say that it's easier to stay and to just with it if you've been used to just dealing with bull crap like that it but be once more convenient it is yeah it'll be convenient because you have another income you have another this but you ain't got no peace right you ain't got no joy you you're not happy about nothing like that you hating like maybe you cheating on them or her or whatever it just that's when all kind of stuff just happens so if you're at that place in your life where you're needing to make that decision, talk to God about that because nobody else can tell you what you need to do about your situation. Talk to the Lord, tell him what it is that's going on. He already knows though, but he still wants us to talk to him, right? We still come to him. He's our daddy. He want to know what it is that we need and then right. obey when he tells you to do because song had to obey when the Lord was like, yeah, we done. And there was like a synchronicity of everything that happened from her moving out, getting her apartment then getting her house and getting this job and everything. Everything mm -hmm. happened in this particular order because she went ahead and moved. So I just want to encourage y'all move. When God is telling you to move, you go ahead and move. Right. And, you know, and that is a beautiful thing that God has taught me over and over again in my life, especially as being a single mother, because um, I think I have been a single mother longer than I've been married, but, uh, <laughs> but he's taught me time and time again, he will always take care of you. He will always provide for you um, as you just have to trust him. And I've had seasons where, you know, I went from um, being homeless, carless, jobless, uh, and pregnant. Um, yeah. I being on welfare, you know, sleeping on someone's couch, yeah. um, to him providing me with a place to live. And then like everything just, just started showing up in my life, everything that I needed. It was a time where, you know, my son, he didn't have any clothes to wear. I couldn't afford to buy clothes. And I was like, God, you said, you're going to take care of this child. And then the clothes just started showing up like in like bags full, like trash bags full of clothes. People was like, hey, I got these clothes. The Lord told me to give it to you. Hey, I got this bunk bed. The Lord told me to give it to you. Hey, I got this, you know, this, that, that. like, I have so many different things that God just provided for me through my, you know, being a single parent transition. I even remember when it, I got to the place financially where I was making too much money to be on welfare anymore. And they sent me the letter and I was like shaking and scared because I hadn't been off, off uh, welfare. And so I went to my pastor and I was like, I don't know what they're going to do because they're not going to give me food stamps and stuff anymore. And she was like, that's a good thing. That means you don't have to rely on the government anymore. And I was like, oh, okay. It hadn't sunk into <laughs> me that I was at a different level of making money. And from that time, just, you know, continue to trust God and increasing and increasing um, supernaturally, because this really has just been a supernatural increase in my life that God continues to show me, like, I always got you. I always yes. take care of you. And there were, of course, moments where things would happen. And I'd be like, God, you said you're going to take care of me and I don't got no money or my car is about to break down and I need to get this fixed for that. And then like stuff, money would just show up, like literally. And I'm just like, oh, well, this works fast. Like, but it's just a matter of trusting God. And I think the biggest testimony and my pastor, he tells me this all the time too. He was like, your testimony um, your your story is so influential and helps so many single mothers because there are a lot of single mothers out there and they're trying to figure out how to make it working three and four jobs taking care of kids. I did that for like a year. I, I y'all, I thought I was gonna die. It was exhausting. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, I just gotta figure out how to trust God. And with just one job, God supply constantly there was even a time where I got laid off and I was out of a job for like eight months and everything was taken care of don't ask me how I don't even really remember how everything was taken care of but once that well that that resource dried up right before that one ended he opened another door like I got contacted about a job and um he I, I really didn't want to take the job I was like that's not enough money for me he was like 
you're you're not even working right now so you're not making any money I'm just taking care of everything else he was like take this job and as soon as I took that job the other income just like disappeared and I was like oh he knew I was about to lose that so he opened the door for a different job and that job opened the door for a different job and it just it just continues to go like that so trust God don't be afraid of um you know, well, I don't know how I'm gonna take care of my kids if I leave this person. If you know on the inside of you, if you need to get out that relationship and just as well as you know that you need to be assured that God doesn't want you to be in a place where you're being abused or your children are being abused and that. So he will take care of you wherever it is that he leads you to. Don't, you know, yeah, you may have some fear, it may be a little scary because you don't know the next step ahead, but trust that if you take that step out, he's always going to catch you and he will provide. And so something, I'll just throw this part out there. I feel like I said it before, but I don't remember. Maybe I need to say it again. Um, one of the things somebody told me before I had got my divorce, they was like, well, you know, it's better to be married and deal with this stuff than to be a single parent. Being a single parent is hard. That is not a good reason to stay with somebody, y'all. And that was like the worst advice ever. And But I, I had enough sense to know God had took care of me before and he could do it again. And as literally as soon as I listened and I left that relationship, um, God gave me another position that not only covered my original income, but also covered my ex's income. So my income doubled. So I was not lacking anything. And that's just the way that God does. He's like, let me show you that I can still, you're not going to lack anything. You're not going to miss anything. So. Look, hallelujah to that. Somebody better receive that. Receive that double income. Look, I received that double income. I didn't tell you, I was looking at some jobs yesterday. Yes. I was like, let me go and let me go and look because the anointing that's on her life uh, when i when i see her this saturday i'm gonna rub off on her real quick because i can use the double up you know what i'm saying on my salary my family could use that for sure so i'm just looking i'm like what job was paid uh 75 000 in arizona girl i'm looking i'm like i gotta find me some 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 websites but again i believe that god he just he orchestrates everything at the right time and it's on purpose and it's always for a purpose. So um, yeah, I'm excited to see what he's doing in your life song. Yes, so you I'm guys excited to see what he's doing in your life. We're getting ready to celebrate Jazz's birthday, not this weekend, next weekend. Yes. So y'all may see some video oh clips from that. Yeah, I'm gonna be real extra. I think I've already said that before. I mean, I got sashes and glitter and sequins and African print. I got all kind of stuff going on for my birthday weekend. So stay tuned. I know we're gonna be doing some lives and doing just some fun stuff, just saying hi. So you guys can celebrate with me and with us for my birthday. I'll be 36. Yay! Yes, extra. 36 so anyway did anyone else have any comments Susie said in a world where perfection is expected why would anyone settle for abuse mm. well That's they good. settle because they don't know who they are they don't know who they are like so I'm trying to think about why I settled because I've been in some situations to where I said I know who I was or I thought maybe this was gonna be all that I could get right that I think also that comes from a place of that shame and condemnation especially if you have been a single parent and then you have more than one kid or even if you have one kid you know people feed into your head that this is the best that you can do so you might as well just accept this person because ain't nobody else gonna want you because you got kids you know but you're worth so much more than that and let God love you and then he will send the right person who will love you and all of your children yeah however many you have because it don't seem like I mean there are men out there that got 5 10 15 20 kids and they still seem to keep getting love 
Why is it different for women? Probably because they ain't taking care of all their kids at the same time, but still. I'm needing my tea on that one, y'all. Anyway, I didn't see no questions or nothing else in the chat. Song, you got anything else? I don't. This has been a good conversation. You know, you guys, we always love coming and talking to you. Um, yeah, I hope that you guys got something from this talk today. I'm sure he's going to post some other stuff. So we'll be having some more conversations about some stuff. Are we recording that... tomorrow? Oh, no. Huh? Are we recording tomorrow? We were supposed to record tomorrow. Yes, I, I guess we can still. Yeah. So let me know. I think we'll come back on tomorrow. Let us know if you guys have any questions. Yay! You want yeah, we, we shifted our dates to Friday, but we may shift it again because depending on- That's some new things on the horizon. Exactly. Some growth and some opportunities and stuff. So- all right. Well, I finished my first bottle of water today. I'm excited, even though you it's just garbage. now finished it. Listen, this is I. I drank my coffee this morning. Oh, it's two forty eight. You know what? I was just saying, even though it's almost three o'clock in the afternoon, I know that I'm supposed to be drinking water throughout the day. But the fact that I talk about this water, how you just gonna drink one bottle? It's three o'clock. I because I've been sitting at this desk working. I I when we started this, I said I ain't ate all day, so I just ate some grapes. I haven't eaten. All I had was coffee this morning, and I've been sitting right here working all day. And then I got on here. So I know it's bad, y'all. I have to do better at drinking more water throughout the day. Okay. I know this. I don't need nobody to correct me on it, but it would be good if my accountability partner would like text me every now and then we talk all the time on the phone she don't be like hey did you have some water today because I literally will forget until I start choking then I'd be like I need water but if I'm not choking I really don't think about it I'd be okay. like oh yeah I didn't drink water today it's not it's not something that's on my mind all the time y'all I'm, I'm gonna make a better effort to to make sure you're drinking water Miss Susie says you guess this is my social hour please come back on <laughs> <laughs> we'll come okay. back okay. <laughs> we're glad that we can be here for you make sure you guys um make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel um i mean you can always share this video off on facebook with other people on facebook but we also upload these videos onto our youtube so if people are not on facebook you can share share them from there but you don't know that we post stuff unless you're subscribed to that channel um we also have our instagram we yeah. post a lot of random stuff on there so most times we end up posting like our random clip videos dancing whatever whatnot on instagram or our tiktok we're still working on tiktok y'all but yeah, I feel like I'm too old for TikTok. Like, I just, I really do. And the way my daughter looked at our TikTok videos, it was really disrespectful. Like, she was like, what are you doing on TikTok? Like, we too old. Like, TikTok is just, it's just comedy. It's just supposed to be fun. We can't have, like, deep and meaningful conversations is what she said. And right. Just, and like, even the stuff that we thought was funny, she was just like. Like, it wasn't funny. And is that what other people think? when they look at our TikToks? Possibly. I even showed it to my boys. I'm going to make a video of, of like kids reacting to their parents' TikTok. And I'm going to show them my videos. Because they was like, this is not even funny stuff, mom. I was like, I was, it's I funny. was really funny, OK? I thought I was really funny. <sighs> you mad. <laughs> <laughs> that video was hilarious. You want to argue. <laughs> Y'all, you got to go on TikTok and I call it TikTok. Go on, on over to TikTok and go check out that video. It's funny to me. So, so yeah, Hi, we're Sophia. Sophia hey, here. Sophie. So, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're still growing all of our stuff, getting our platforms and everything together. I, um, if you don't know, we both have individual platforms too. You can go ahead and check those out Inspiring Beauty and Believers, Jasmine Tamia. Um, we both have YouTubes, we both have uh, Instagrams, we both have Facebook pages. Apparently, we have a lot of stuff to say, huh? 
yeah places we need to be all spread out and stuff so praise god all righty well let's go ahead and get up off of here see y'all tomorrow apparently yeah let's get two this week you might get three because we'll be together on saturday so we I don't know. know yes we gonna have to pop in and say what's up or something on saturday too yes but we love y'all y'all have a good day enjoy your thursday Peace. <laughs> I always gotta find this button. Okay. You wanna argue? I can't argue with you.